Another great show for you today. There's been a lot happening on the continent of Africa. There's been a lot of news lately, good news, and there's also been bad news. Of course, we're going to concentrate on the bad news, the major disrespect from the Belgium government, the major disrespect uh, for those of you who have been living under a rock, who don't know what's going on. Recently, the Belgium government returned Patrice Lumumba's tooth. Let me repeat that again. We're in the year 2022. Patrice Lumumba died about 60 to 67 years ago, if I'm not mistaken. In the year 2022, the Belgian government has took it upon themselves to return Patrice Lumumba's tooth, his golden tooth. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna discuss that as the show goes on. Let's open up with Daniel chapter nine and verse twelve. And Watson, if you have any questions, you could feel free to chime in and ask your questions. All right, uh, today uh, I sent you a topic. You did, did you? Uh, I didn't. Maybe, I didn't get it. Oh well, yeah, I did in the afternoon. Uh, I think. Nope, I didn't get it. Joel didn't send me anything. What was the topic that you sent? Yeah, the topic. Okay, the topic was about the brief history of white wedding because we Africans we do our African tradition wedding and it's called engagement, and we call the white weddings. Okay, so I just wanted maybe to, for you to explain the, the brief history of. Okay, well, this what this is what we'll do: the brief history of white wedding. We'll touch on that next week. We'll talk about the white right. wedding. We'll talk about the white wedding next week. Today, let's speak about your good friends over there on the continent of Europe by way of Belgium and how they've been disrespecting the African people lately. Let's open up with Daniel. Right. Daniel chapter go 9, ahead. verse 12. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Daniel 9 and 12. This is, this is the book of Daniel chapter 9 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. And he hath confirmed his words. Mm -hmm which he spake against us. Now, where did, where did God speak against us, Watson? In the Bible, mainly in the um, Old Covenant, when you read the book of Deuteronomy, it has the curses written that God has spoken against us if we would break his laws. So Daniel is just reiterating what was written before time. It says, and he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us, read on, and against our judges that judged us mm -hmm. by bringing upon us a great evil. By bringing upon us a great evil. What is the great evil that God brought upon us, brothers and sisters of Malawi? Slavery, slavery, slavery. You read about that in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verses 15 all the way to 68. It talks about the various slave trades that the children of Israel would go into. Read on. For under the whole heaven have mm -hmm. not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Now notice what the Bible says, Watson. The Bible says under the whole heaven has not been done, but what has been done to Jerusalem, meaning no other nations on this planet earth, no other nations, Watson, has gone through the turmoil the affliction, the slavery that we went through. Because a lot of people like to compare themselves to our tribulations and our suffering. God is saying, the prophets are saying through the spirit of the most high that the things that we go through, nobody else on this planet earth has ever gone through what we go through, Watson. Read it again one more time. Start from the beginning. And he have confirmed his words, mm -hmm. which he spake against us. Mm -hmm. And against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. Read on. As it is written in the law of Moses. Now you see, he says, as it is written in the law of Moses in the book of Deuteronomy. That's where you find the law of Moses, the first five books of Moses. Read on. All this evil is come upon us. Mm -hmm. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God. So our people are still stuck in the Christian church, Watson. We have still not repented for our sins. We still have not made supplication for our sins. We still have not prayed to the land, towards the east, our, our homeland, our motherland, Jerusalem, 
and ask God for forgiveness. Okay, read on. That we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. So the whole purpose, Watson, God wants us to turn from our iniquities and understand the truth. What is the truth? What is the truth? Because everybody says, everybody likes to say, well, they have the truth. There's only one truth. Everything outside of this one truth is called your opinions. But let's find out the truth according to the Bible. Psalms 119, 142. Book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 4 and 42. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So the Bible says, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, Watson. Go ahead. And thy law is the truth. And thy what? Thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So what's the truth according to the Bible, Watson? God's laws, which we break, which we broke. Read verse 14. Verse 14. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil mm -hmm. and brought it upon us. So God said he watched upon our evil and he recompensed us his judgments for all our evil. Go ahead. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. Read. For we obey not his voice. And we still don't obey his voice, Watson. We still break God's commandments. So God allowed the other nations to come and enslave us. Okay? Go back. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. You heard this before. You, you, we've read this plenty of times on this radio show, Watson. So you should be familiar with this chapter. Let's read Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou mm -hmm. wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments mm -hmm. and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. While all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Let's read some of these curses just to refresh our memory. Let's read verse 32. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So the Bible says our sons and our daughters, Watson, will be given unto another people, meaning another race of people, another race of people. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. It says your eyes is going to look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Read on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. There would be no might in your hand to redeem your children, to save your children, whether it be physically, spiritually, or mentally. We didn't have the economic might. We didn't have the physical might to redeem our children. And we're going to give you some historical examples of that. Okay? Uh, jump to... You just read verse 32. Jump to verse, I want verse 47 and 48. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Mm -hmm. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. So, Watson, you got to ask yourself a question. Brothers and sisters of Malawi, ask yourself a, a question. Have we been serving the Lord thy God with joyfulness of heart? If you're sincere and you're truthful and you're honest, the, the answer to that will be no, you have not. We are the ones that are committing adultery. We are the ones that are fornicating. We are the ones that are lying. We are the ones that are stealing. We are the ones that are boarding our babies. We are the ones following Easter. We are the ones following Christmas. We are the ones still celebrating birthdays. It's us that's doing these things. It is us that's still bowing down to the white image of Jesus Christ. That's us. That's us as a people. We are still defying the laws of God. Read on. And with gladness of heart mm -hmm. for the abundance of all things. So Watson, whatever you need, whatever brothers and sisters of Malawi need, God says you got to serve him for the in the abundance of all things. Read on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So because we broke God's laws and he brought this great evil called slavery on us, Watson, and brothers and sisters of Malawi who are tuning in, God says we're going to serve our enemies. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So who sent, since we're talking about the Belgian people today and what they did to our brothers and sisters in the Congo, who sent the Belgium people over there in Africa? 
Who allowed the European Union and all these European countries to do what's called the scramble for Africa, where they divided Africa and colonized it and took your resources and raped your woman? Who allowed that to happen? The one true God of heaven and earth. All right. The Lord, our God, Yahweh. He's the one that did that because we broke his commandments, brothers and sisters. That's why we got to repent of our sins and return back to God. Read on. In hunger. In what? In hunger. You want food, Watson? You got to serve your enemies. They're the one that control the importation and exportation of, of goods. Look what's going on with the war of Russia and Ukraine causing wheat, the price of wheat to soar high, which is having a great impact throughout the whole world, not just America, but even in Africa. Okay, things are going up. Read on. And in thirst. And in thirst, you want water. Watson, you got to go to your enemies. Okay, they control the importation and exportation of beverages. Read on. And in nakedness. And in what? Nakedness. And in nakedness. Watson, if you was to take off your jacket right now and you looked at the back of the tag, I guarantee that jacket does not say made in Malawi. It probably says made in Italy, made in Russia, made in America, made in Japan, made in China. Okay, that's what it says. Okay, and for those of you who might be able to make your own clothing, because we know you have a lot of people out there that that uh, uh, get their clothes tailored, that sew and so forth. But where do you get those raw textiles from? Do you import that? You import that. Okay, God says for food, for beverage, for water, and for nakedness, you shall go to your enemies. Read on. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. So whatever you want, Watson, you got to go to your enemy. You want a license? You got to go to him. You want an education? You got to go to him. What language are you currently speaking now, Watson? You speak English. Who taught you that English? Surely it was not your great, great, great grandfather. He was speaking your native tongue, the ethnic tongue of Malawi. So who was it? It was a so-called white man. He's the one that colonized us. He's the one who taught us to dress the way we dress. He's the one who taught us to talk the way we talk. He's the one who taught us to worship the way we worship. All these different denominations in Christianity, he's the one that taught it to us. When we open up the Bible, brothers and sisters, you do not see Baptists. You don't see Pentecostal. You don't see Mormonism. You don't see Roman Catholic. These are things that was given to us by our enemies. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Upon thy neck. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Read on. Until he hath destroyed thee. Until he has destroyed thee. So, now, what is the Bible saying right there, Watson? When the yokes of iron were removed from our necks, we were completely destroyed. Now we, some of us in ignorance and others in willful stupidity, we follow after the customs of the other nations. Whether it be religion, politics, culture, whatever we do, we follow after the so-called white man. What is that letting you know? That according to the Bible, we have been completely destroyed. Why? Give me Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. So what happened to us when the yokes of iron were, were removed from our necks, Watson? This is what happened. Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Mm -hmm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What is the knowledge that we lack? We just read it earlier. What is the knowledge that we lack, Watson? We just read it earlier. What is the knowledge that we lack? Um, okay. The, is, the knowledge from the Bible. Exactly. God's laws. Malachi mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 7. Okay, we fell off with our culture, our identity, and more importantly, God's laws. All right? Malachi 2, verse 7. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. You hear that? For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Go ahead. 
And they should seek the law at his mouth. And they should seek the law at his mouth, the law at the priest's mouth. So what when it says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, the knowledge that we're destroyed for is the lack of the laws of God in our community, the lack of the laws of God in our lives. Because of so, we have been thoroughly destroyed. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and read verse 48 again for our brothers and sisters tuning in. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee mm -hmm. in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. We don't. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. We don't. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle fly it. so as swift as the eagle fly it. so who's what nation used the eagle as an emblem you had the so-called white men you had the italians you had the french you had the american you had the british belgium all of them used the eagle as their emblem god says i'm going to bring a nation from far as swift as the eagle flieth read on a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. That's why I asked you earlier, Watson. I said your great, great, great grandfather, he wasn't speaking English. He was speaking the ethnic language of the people of Malawi at that time. Okay, depending on whatever tribe he belonged to. But now you speak English. Why? Because that language was forced on your forefathers by the colonizers, by the British, because those are the people that colonized Malawi. God says, I'm going to bring a nation from far whose tongue you shall not understand. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. They're going to look mean. Why are they going to look red as hell? They're going to look red as hell. Remember, the so-called white man, he has no pigmentation, no melanin in his skin. You can see the blood through his skin. That's why in Genesis, the 25th chapter, verse 25, it tells you the progenitor of the white race. His name is Esau. And he came out red all over like in hairy garment. And later his name was changed to Edom, E-D-O-M, which means red. He is the forefather, the progenitor of the white race today. God says, I'm going to bring a nation from far with fierce countenance, which shall not what? Regard the person of the old. Regard the person of the old. So whether you were 90 years old or 80 years old, guess what, Watson? You had to pick cotton. You had to work on the tobacco field, the sugar cane field. Guess what? In Congo, the rubber field. You had to get that rubber out the tree. Go ahead. Nor show favor to the young. And if you were three years old, as long as you can walk or stand, you had to get your butt outside and work the plantation from sun up to sun up. Go ahead. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. And he ate the fruit of the cattle, read on. And the fruit of thy land. And the fruit of the land, meaning your resources, read on. Until thou be destroyed. Until we be destroyed. And, and this was a deep hatred. This is not, we're not just reading about the transatlantic slave trade or colonial period. This hatred, Watson, still resides in the people today. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you proof. Get me Amos chapter 1 and 11 since I said that. This is a perpetual hatred. This is a, a, a deep-seated hatred inside of their soul. You know why, Watson? God made them like that. God created him like that. The so-called white man is God's belt. The so-called white man is God's chastening tool on earth. Who does he chastise? He, God uses him to chastise us. God is not going to stick his big black hands out of the third heavens, out of the sky to chastise us. Who does he use to chastise us? He uses men. He uses men to chastise us, Watson. He used the white man to send us into slavery. He used the white man to hang us. He used the white man to cut off our limbs. He used the white man to flay us. Why? That we would bethink ourselves and remember who we are and remember that these great evil that was brought, us, brought upon us, like the forefather Daniel said in chapter 9, verse 12, is a result of us breaking God's commandments. Okay? Read what you got. Amos chapter 1 and 11. 
Amos chapter 1, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Edom mm -hmm. and for four, I will not turn mm -hmm. away the punishment thereof, because mm -hmm. he did pursue his brother with the sword. If it's remember, Esau was Jacob's brother. God said he pursued us with the sword. What else did this devil do? Read on. And did cast off all pity. And, and did what? And did cast off all pity. Read on. And his anger did tear perpetually. And his anger did tear perpetually. Go ahead. And he kept his wrath forever. And he kept his wrath forever. Forever. Now I want to bring up an article. Um, since we're all on this topic, go start with the um Belgium offers regret, but no reparations to Congo. Get me that real quick. Some of you might be asking, well, that's the Congo. This is Malawi. What do we have to do with each other? Guess what, brothers? We are all brothers. When we hear things going on over there on the continent of Africa, guess what? We feel it. We feel it here in America because you are our brothers. And it should be vice versa. When you see brothers in the States getting shot down on the street, um, uh, systematic racism destroying us, guess what? You should feel it as well. All right? We are one nation, one mind, one spirit, one heart. Okay, get me that. Belgium offers regret, but no reparations to Congo. All right, and I want you to read it. Okay, go ahead. Belgium offers regret, but no reparations to Congo. King Philippe, Philippe stopped short of apologizing for colonial era atrocities, angering the Congolese opposition and diaspora. And diaspora. Diaspora is another word for scattered. All right. Get, since I said that, get me James 1 and 1. Hold this article here. Get me James 1 and 1. So this king, this Belgian king, Watson, he didn't, he just offered an apology. What can apology do for you, Watson? Watson, if I come to Malawi, I take your resources, I rape your woman, then I turn around and say, I'm sorry. What did I, what is that? It's malarkey. It's, mal it's all lies. It's BS. Okay, that's what it is. When somebody apologized, they're supposed to return what they took. Belgium has not done that. They won't even offer the Congolese people reparations. All they offer you is an apology and, a, and one golden tooth. We're going to get into that golden tooth in a minute. Okay, read what you got. Come James, on. James chapter 1, verse 1. So the article, the article said that King Philippe angered Congolese people and the diaspora. What is the diaspora? We're about to read it right now. Read. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, mm -hmm. a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. What did the word scattered mean? means dispersed. It means diaspora. How did God scatter us into the diaspora? By way of cargo slave ships. Okay, let's read on. Welcome, welcome to Foreign skip, Policies skip Africa. That, skip, skip that part. Get to the point. Right here, where it says King Leopold the second. King Leopold the second ghost still haunts Congo. Mm -hmm. Belgium's King Philippe has concluded a six-day visit to the Democratic Republic of the Congo that was billed as a step forward after a brutal colonial past. Read on. In a speech to Congo's parliament, the king expressed regret for the paternalism, discrimination, and racism of the colonial mm -hmm. regiment. I mm -hmm. wish to reaffirm my deepest regrets for those wounds of the past, he said. Read on. Members of the Congolese diaspora have criticized his speech for falling short of a formal apology. Read on. In the face of the crimes committed by Belgium, regrets are not enough. Mm -hmm. Congolese opposition Senator Francine Muyumba wrote on Twitter, an apology and a promise of reparations are expected from him. It is at this price that we will definitely turn the page. 
Now, let me ask you something. Did you read that in Amos 1 and 11, where it said a perpetual a perpetual hatred? Yes, sir. You read that? Okay, go ahead. Keep reading. King Leopold, the brother of Philippe. Right to the article. Go ahead. King Leopold II, the brother of Philippe, great-great-grandfather, claimed the territory as his personal property in 1885 during the Berlin Conference that mm -hmm. carved up much of Africa and awarded territories to various European states. And Malawi, Malawi, um, Watson, was given to the British when they did this. What you're reading about is called the scramble for Africa. Read on, read a little faster. African mm -hmm. leaders were not involved in the negotiations. Mm -hmm. Leopold II violently plundered the country for more than two decades before it became a Belgian colony. Now, yeah. notice what it said. African, African leaders were not involved in the negotiations. How come African leaders were not involved in the negotiation, Watson? Because they don't care. Your opinion does not matter to white folks. Your opinion does not matter to Esau, but all of this was God's plan. Why? Because God wanted to chastise us. So he made us an offscoring and refuse amongst the people. Okay, read on. He amassed great wealth from Kondo's raw materials. Mm -hmm. Yet, until his death in 1909, Leopold II never set foot in what he viewed as his colony, a territory. Go down. A Go down. Uh, read right there where it says it is estimated. It is estimated that more than half of the 20 million people then living in the Belgian Congo lost their lives due to atrocities committed by colonial authorities and forced labor. Limbs on. of children were severed as punishment when their parents did not meet ivory and rubber extraction quotas. And mm -hmm. women and girls were pawned as sexual slaves to Belgian colonial agents as a way to force Congolese men into the forest to collect rubber. Wow, hold that. Don't remove this article. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Now I want you to read verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. You hear that? The fruit of your land and all thy labor shall another nation, Watson, eat up, and you shall be oppressed and crushed always. So right here in this article, what was the fruit of the land that the other nations were eating up in the Congo? It was when they went into the forest to collect rubber, Watson. So the Belgian were importing mass production of forced labor rubber, into Belgium and what? Enriching their cities. That's the when you go to Brussels, especially in Belgium, it looks like it's made of gold. Why? Because these are resources that they use to force labor to enrich their cities. Trust me, Belgium would be a third world country without the Congo. Belgium would be a third world country without the Congo. Britain would be a third world country without Malawi. It's the same thing. Now, in the same article, it said, what happened? It says the girls were pawned for what? Come on. And, and women and girls were pawned as sexual slaves to Belgian colonial agents as a way to force Congolese men into the forest to collect rubber. And guess what? Many of these women were married. Do you think, do you think the, the so-called white man cared about the law called thou shalt not commit adultery? They didn't give a damn about that law but guess what that was prophesied to happen give me deuteronomy 28 verse 30 that was prophesied to happen deuteronomy the 28th chapter the 30th verse deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 30 mm -hmm. thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her mm -hmm. thou shalt build an house so you were promised you were promised you were promised to another another woman was promised to you meaning you were engaged to another woman or you were married to another woman but God who the man? That another man was the Belgian man. Okay, by way of Leopold the second. Read on. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Read on. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. 
You hear that? All of this is Bible prophecy. Now read the second um, uh, paragraph, which says Belgians also. Belgians also looted hundreds of thousands of Congolese objects, which hmm. were brought to Belgium's Royal Museum for Central Africa, where, wow. they are, where they are still stored today, making up more than 80% of the museum's collection. Wow, you hear that? Do you hear what we're reading, Watson? So the Belgian museum, they have in their possession stuff that they stole. Meanwhile, this king that we just seen, this so-called king, King Felipe of Belgium, he went and met the Congolese president. Do you think he would even have the audacity, the compassion to say, look, everything we stole, we're going to return? No, that always keeps the white man knowing that he's on top and you're at the bottom. As long as he has his pale red leprosy feet on your neck, that's what, ha that's what he loves to do. That's all that matters. Okay, read on. Philippe visited Congo's National Museum in Kanasha, mm -hmm. where, where he handed over a large mass known as Kakungu. Mm -hmm. But rather than permanently returning it... L no, 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 now listen to this. Pay attention. Pay attention, Watson, brothers and sisters of Malawi. King Felipe of Belgium visited Congo's National Museum, where he brought this large mass called the Kakungu. But rather than permanently return it, he handed it back on what? Indefinite loan to the country it was taken from. Read I, am, I am here to return to you this exceptional work in order to allow Congolese to discover and admire it, he said. And then after you discovered it and admired it, you had to give back, you had to give the Belgian government back what they stole. Imagine that. Imagine that, Watson. I come to your house. I come to your house, right? I kick open the door. I didn't knock on the door and you opened it and let me in willingly. I kick open the door. I find you and your family sitting down at the dinner table. I take, let's say I take your daughter. I leave with your daughter. I come back 10 years later and I say, hey, Watson, remember me? It's me. I kicked open your door and I took your daughter. Here's your daughter. Say hi to her. Shake her hand. Give her a hug. Give her a big kiss on the cheek. But once you're done, I got to take your daughter back. That's stealing. That's theft. There's no, I'm telling you, there's no, there is no good in this man's heart, in his soul. That's how God made them. They understand that Congo was resourceful. The minute they give back, the minute they give back, what they stole, all countries must follow after them and do the same. Watch this. Watch the law. Get me um, Deuteronomy, the 19th chapter. All right, uh, Deacon. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe before you go any further, uh, I just I just had some thoughts. I just had uh, some question to say. Uh, there is a verse in the Bible to say, do not hold down vengeance because the vengeance are for me, the Lord. Yes. Uh, but should should the children of God just wait for the Lord to to do vengeance for them? Why is it that when the children of God make vengeance on their colonial, uh, colonial masters, they are regarded as terrorists? When they are trying to reclaim, uh, reclaim back their land, mm -hmm. they are regarded as terrorists. Why? Well, isn't that ironic, Captain? Yes, it's very ironic. It's very ironic. Remember, the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. All right. He raped, robbed and pillaged and terrorized. But when you try to do it back to him, he tries to tell you, oh, no, you're not supposed to do that. OK, he tells you to forgive and forget. If that's the case, how come they did not forgive and forget 9-11? How come George Bush did not for forgive and forget the um, the war in Iraq back in the 90s that his father lost? They went right back into Iraq. And what did they do to Saddam Hussein? They hung him. How come France and Hillary Clinton and America did not forgive and forget Muammar Gaddafi trying to establish the golden dinar, that, that, that currency? He wanted to establish a golden currency for all of Africa. How come they didn't forgive and forget? But whenever you and I get on these platforms and we speak about the atrocities committed to our people, they tell you, oh, forgive and forget. Guess what? God is not going to forgive. 
God is not going to forgive and God is not going to forget. And his judgments are way worse that you and I could ever think about doing. That's why they call that's why they call him the king of terror. Okay? The dreadful God, Alashadja. Okay? What God has reserved for all nations, mainly the so-called white man, for the atrocities that he did to our people, you can't even fathom it. You can't even you can't even think about the terror that he has that he has written in the Bible. All we have to do is keep the commandments of God, unify as a nation, the 12 tribes, reverence our king, our Messiah, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ, keep the commandments. And God said, he's going to work. He's going to do a marvelous work amongst us. That's what we got to do. But notice what they said, Watson, about the mask that they took. Get me Deuteronomy. I want Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 17. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. You hear that? Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Did they remove your landmark? Yes, they didn't ask for it. They took it. Get me Job 24 and 2. Job 24 and 2. What was the landmark that they took, um, Watson, from the Congo? They took the resources and they took all of these artifacts into their museum. That's what they did. Watch this, Job 24 and 2, because they didn't ask for it. They didn't say, hey, can I borrow this? They conquered the Congolese people and they took their landmark. Job 24 and 2. The book of Job, chapter 24, verse 2. Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. So what are we reading? We're reading Bible prophecy. That's what they did. And that's what they continue to do until this day. Get me the get me the next article let's see which one i want hold on let me scroll through it okay i want get me uh get me the picture of the devil okay show this show this do it quickly okay so what do we have here we have a picture of king leopold to the left and you have the congolese slaves to the right all right get me the second image Get me the second image. Okay, look at this. Look at this, Watson. You have the hands and feet of brothers cut off. One brother's holding up a hand. So you were forced to pick rubber. If you didn't pick enough rubber, they would chop your hand off, your nose off, your feet off. Okay, this is what they did. This is what they did to our people. They chopped off your limbs. They chopped off your limbs. Okay, go ahead. Get me the next next pictures. Look at that. Hands, feet chopped off. Get me Ezekiel 23 and verse 25. They chopped your ears off. They chopped your nose off. Ezekiel 23 and verse 25. Let's read that. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And I will set my jealousy against thee. And they shall deal furiously with thee. Who's the they that shall deal furiously with us? Watson, brothers and sisters of Malawi. It was the so-called white man by way of Belgium. Read on. They shall take away thy nose and they thy They chop ear. your nose off. They chop your nose off when you didn't come back with enough rubber. Read on. And thine ears. And they took away our ears, chopped off the ears if you didn't come back with enough rubber. Read on. And thy remnant shall fall by the sword. And they killed us with the sword if we didn't come back with enough rubber. Read. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. And a lot of us were burnt alive. Get me the next picture. Get me the one with the child. Look at, look at this brother right here, Horace, looking at the hands of his daughters, hands of his sons, because they could not come back with enough rubber. Okay? Okay, thank you. Let's read that. King, Leop King Leopold II of Belgium murdered 15 million Africans to establish control of the Congo's resources. You hear this, Watson? You hear this, brothers and sisters of Malawi? How many people, how many black men, how many black women was murdered by this demon? Go ahead. Africans to establish control of the Congo's resources. Millions of remaining men, women, and children had their hands amputated for failure to meet rubber production quotas. 
This barbarianism is still honored and celebrated worldwide under the guise of fine taste and expensive delicacies. Look at this. So in their stores, I've seen some of their stores, Watson. I was in Brussels. I've seen it. Look at the hands. Look at the black chocolate covered hands. Do you think they're just admiring your skin? They're just admiring your hands? No, they're paying homage and reverence to what King Leopold and his people did when they chopped off your hands and chopped off your limbs. That's what they did. That's why it's hard for King Felipe, so-called King Felipe, to come to the Congo and apologize because he knows he's a fake. He's a phony. Get me Psalms 58 and verse 3. While, while he's getting Psalms 58 and verse 3, I want you to get me the article on Patrice Lumumba, where it says uh, Belgium returns Patrice Lumumba's tooth to family 61 years after his murder. Okay, read Psalms 58 and verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 58, verse 3. Mm. The wicked are estranged from the womb. So who's the wicked? The main wicked is Esau. Who's Esau? The father of all Caucasian people. God says the wicked are estranged from the womb. Go ahead. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. They go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies. So that so that white baby that's in the hospital, as soon as he says goo goo ga ga, guess what? That's a lie. God is saying that's a lie. They speak lies. They okay, let's read this. Uh, go down to, go down to, um, scroll down. This is Patrice Lumumba, okay? Go down to his assassination. We all know who Patrice Lumumba was. He was the first prime minister of the Free Republic of Congo. Keep going down. Get me final days. Stop. Wait, wait, go back up. Get me final days and execution. Read that. Labumba was sent first on December 3rd, 1960 to Thighsville Military Barracks Camp Party, 150 kilometers from Leopoldville. Uh -huh. he, was, he was accompanied by Maurice Impolo and Joseph Okito. Okay, jump down to, uh, jump down to, I just want to point because I know we're short on time. Get me where it says Lumumba was forcibly, right there. Lumumba was forcibly restrained on the flight to Elizabethville on January 17, 1961. On arrival, he and his associates were conducted under arrest to the Broise house, where they were brutally beaten and tortured by Katangan officers. So these Katangan officers were mainly black people, and I think they had one white overseer, one white general supervisor or lieutenant. Go ahead. While President Sishombi and his cabinet decided what to do with him. Later that night, Lumumba was driven to an isolated spot where, according to reports, three firing squads had been assembled and commanded by Belgian contract officer Julian Gat, a Belgian commission of... So Inquiry. Julian Gat, Ju Julian, Julian Gat was a Belgian commander. Okay, a Belgian commission of inquiry found that what? The execution was carried out by Katangan's authority. Read on. It, it reported that Katanga President Tshombi and two other ministers were present with four Belgian officers under command of Katangan authorities. Read. According to Ludo de Witt, the last stage of the operation was personally controlled and led by Belgian contracts. Read on. Katangan Police Commissioner Franz Verishure, who had operational command, led Lumumba and the other two to their place of execution, where that ordered the firing. Lumumba Jump to the point. Jump to the part where it says the bodies were thrown. That same paragraph, the bodies were thrown. Come on. The bodies were thrown into a shallow grave. Mm -hmm. The follow morning, the following morning, on orders of Katangan Interior Minister Godfroyd Manungo, who wanted to make the bodies disappear and thereby prevent a burial site from being created. Belgian Gendarmerie officer Gerard Sote and his team dug up and dismembered the corses 
and dissolve them in sulfuric acid. Sulfuric, the- sulfuric, sulfuric acids. So they dug up the, and dismembered the bodies. They chopped up the bodies, Watson. They chopped up the bodies and they dissolved the bodies in sulfuric acid while the bones were grounded. And then they took out his teeth. Do you know who kept his teeth? The so-called white man. And he took the golden tooth and he passed it down to his daughters, to his daughters, daughters, daughters. And then finally, just about three weeks ago, this is what happened. Read this. Belgium returns Patrice Lumumba's tooth to family 61 years after his murder. Belgian authorities. They returned the tooth. They returned the tooth. What disgrace. What disrespect is that? Read on. Belgian authorities have returned the tooth of the murdered Congolese independence hero Patrice Lumumba to his children. And a new move towards recognition of atrocities that accompany the country's brutal exploitation of the former colony. Now, wait, 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 wait. Watson, do you see something wrong with this? They're saying that this move is recognizing the atrocities accompanied by the country's brutal exploitation of the former colony, Congo. Would it be one way to recognize what you have done is to pay back reparations in money form, currency? Wouldn't be one way to recognize what you have done is to what? Is to return all of those things that you've seen, all of those masks. Wouldn't that be a way? They returned a tooth. They returned a tooth. Read on. Come on. The relic is all that remains of Lumumba, Mm -hmm. the first prime minister of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC. Under its earlier name, the Republic of Congo, and an icon of the struggle against colonialism in Africa, who was murdered by separatists and Belgian mercenaries in 1961. Read on. His killers dissolved his remains in acid, though some kept his teeth as Macri men, 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 mementos. The same men. way, the same way in America, where they keep our, where they would hang us on trees, keep our ears. Our, I mean, our nose, our ears, and our genitalia as a memento is no no difference from George Zimmerman when he kept the uh, the gun, right? He kept the bag of Skittles. He was signing autographs on the bag of Skittles in remembrance of what? Of him killing Trayvon Martin. It's the same white people all over the earth, wherever we go. Read this last paragraph. The gold cap tooth was handed in a light blue case to a group of family members at the Egmont Palace in Brussels on Monday morning. It was placed in a casket that will be taken to embassy of the DRC as a first step before repatriation. There will be no repatriation. All they do is offer up false apologies. There will be no repatriation. Read on. Lumumba's son, Roland, said last week that the return of the tooth meant his family would be able to finish their mourning. Mm -hmm. By returning the tooth, Belgium is hoping to draw a line under one of the most brutal and shameful episodes in the country's bloody exploitation of Central Africa. Keep reading. Alexander de Croo, the Belgian prime minister, recognized its moral responsibility for Lumumba's killing this is a painful and disagreeable truth, but must be spoken. The crew said, a man was murdered for his political convictions, mm-hmm. convictions, his words, his ideals. Well, that's a lie, because if they really felt like that, all of those relics in the museum should be headed back to the Congo. But they won't do it. Why? Because the white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. Get me Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15, because a lot of our people, we forget our history, Watson. We like to say forgive and forget. Why? Because the white man told us to forgive and forget. Okay? But watch this. Ecclesiastes 3.15. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15. That which hath been is now. That which has been is now. The same people yesterday are the people of today. Okay? That same perpetual hatred that Esau had for God's people of yesterday is still here today. Read on. And that which is to be hath already been. Read on. And God requireth that which is past. So you may say forget the past, but the Bible says God requires which is past. So God is going to bring everything into judgment. Everything. 
And it's so much wickedness, so much evil that this man have done that has not been revealed yet. Because just a couple of weeks ago, we found out that a family in Belgium from one of those officers that was present when Lumumba was killed after they chopped up his body and threw his body in a barrel of acid, the guy took another man's teeth and held on to it. And just now in 2022, they're returning it. That tooth was passed down to his daughter. You think his daughter would have some kind of conscious or shame? No. That daughter passed it down to her daughter. It's just now they're returning it. Imagine everything else that he's hiding. Imagine everything else that the Most High has not revealed yet. God says, I'm going to require everything which is past. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.